So basically, you know, the meaning of luxury has been changed a lot from the past to now. So I'm going to focus on that one, and that means, you know, we need to revisit some old theories, okay, about the luxury sector, and also we need to find some new theories which could fit with the contemporary luxury sector. So from that discussion, I'm going to focus on the Vablin's uh, theory, and then um, I'm going to deliver some theoretical and practical implications. So first one is about the disregard, the private pleasure of consumption. So there is a, an exclusive stroller, and this is um, made by Aston Martin uh, car company. And it costs around 3,000 pounds. It's, it's really expensive. In Veblen's perspective, um, you know, the people why um, purchase this type of stroller is to present uh, to one's financial property. Okay, they want to show off that I can afford this kind of product. But actually, you know, we can't ignore um, quite diverse motivations or purposes to purchase this particular product. Okay, so probably you know, some people might purchase this one because of the functional benefits, or maybe some people might um, you know, consider the safety issues. So if you consider the brand like Aston Martin, and the vehicle company has a high function, Okay, so probably, you know, we need to think about quite diverse, uh, the existence of diverse motivations to purchase and luxury products. Second, uh, this regards the time and place. So Veblen's uh, theories is, is developed in late 1890s, and that, was, uh, that, that period is called the Gilded Age. So in the U.S., you know, the, the America folks and the agriculture in the past but they start to move into the new industry because of the um, industrial revolution. So um, in that period, you know, you could easily see the, uh, the development of wealth. So people actually uh, displayed their wealth by purchasing a particular product. But actually, you know, we are living in the 21st century. And also we have the internet. So probably, you know, there are some differences between this age and also from, from the past age. So uh, that's why you know, the theory should be modified and also revisited in some ways. And the final point is that uh, is the regard, disregard the needs to go beyond status-oriented consumption. So um, Vablin, you know, talked about the symbolic and status-oriented consumption, but basically you know, there are quite diverse consumption practices. So we can't put luxury consumption in just one category. Okay, so we need to consider that aspect. So based on you know, these limitations, my research um, suggests to, to um, visit uh, the successive and expanded form of um, Vablin's theory called inconspicuous consumption. And this is a relatively new concept, so there are quite diverse understandings. And today I will introduce uh, three major studies which talk about this particular theory. So the first one is about the ordinary goods and services. Vablin talks about the uh, exclusive and luxury products, okay, like the handbags or the vehicles that people actually can see. But Chauvin would argue that you know, in these days, today's consumers uh, make a distinction by purchasing a particular product uh, in their daily consumption. And second, uh, subtle signals. So Vablin uh, talked about the explicit brand identif identifications, like the brand logos or the uh, brand names on the product. But actually, you know, without these kind of explicit um, identifications, people can actually recognize uh, very subtle signals, okay, if they have a certain level of knowledge about the field or if they have a particular taste. So we need to start to consider these kind of subtle signals because uh, the exclusive or the conspicuous aspect of market is, is very saturated. And the final point is about the new luxury. So um, Vablin talked about the vertical form of the social hierarchy. So um, you know, the, the very few and the top actually could purchase exclusive products. But actually, you know, in today's, um, if we understand the today's uh, consumer society, you know, the non-financial rich actually go to store and then they go to they purchase luxurious products. So we need to understand the horizontal form of the society. So we might consider uh, the luxury consumers as a quite unique group. Okay, so we need to understand that there are 
diverse types of consumers uh, in the luxury sector.